Hey guys, time for another episode of STFA TV. Today we are doing the Bazooka Bubblegum Bag, and this can be done in either vinyl or fabric. If you're doing it in fabric, then remember all of your in, um, measurements for the base of the bag. The fabric has to be interfaced, and you need a half inch fold over for the two front pieces. So let's get started on this. For your notions, you will need a um, zipper that is two inches longer than the width of the bag. In this case, it's going to need to be a 12 inch zipper. Um, we're doing the six by 10. Um, you will need two pieces of one inch wide gross grain ribbon by two inches. You will need one, one or two lobster claws or D-rings and a piece of five eighths inch by three inch gross grain ribbon. For our lining, We'll need three pieces. The back is nine and a half by seven for the six by 10 bag. For the front, you'll need a nine and a half wide by one and a half with a half inch ironed in fold and nine and a half by six and a half with a half inch fold. For the vinyl, you will need a piece that is nine and a half by one inch, nine and a half by six inch, and for the back, nine and a half by seven inch. There are two appliques. You will need two pieces of vinyl. One is going to be three by nine and a half in blue and three and three quarters by nine and a half in white. So go ahead and the very first, all those measurements, I know I went super fast um, and you may not be doing the six by 10, you're probably doing the five by seven. All those measurements are in your how-to PDF. So go ahead and grab your PDF and check out your particular uh, measurements. Blah, blah, blah. Go ahead and grab some medium weight cutaway. Hoop it up and throw and run color stop one. Voila, and you're going, wow, Ricky, those colors are really bright for thread. I know, I ran my dye lines in white and I probably shouldn't have. So I grabbed an ink pen so that you could see my lines better. So the blue line is the top dye line for the bag. You just wanna make sure you're, that your vinyl always covers that line. The two red lines are what we are going to be most interested in if you're using a number three zipper. If you're using a number five zipper, then the two purple lines are gonna be the things you're interested in. If you're using a number three, then you wanna make sure that your zipper covers um, those two red lines. Why? Because this is one inch wide and number three zippers are one inch wide. So this is your die line for perfect placement for your zipper. If you're using a number five, the tape on a number five is one and a quarter inch. And rather than put even more lines here, these two purple ones are the clearance for the teeth. When you put your zipper in, you wanna make sure that the number five zipper, your teeth are right in the middle of that purple line. So go ahead and line up your zipper, nice and perfect. Make sure that you grab some tapey tape. Remember, I love my tape. Make sure that your zipper is nice and straight and perfect. Do, do, do. And you wanna tack that down on the left side and the right side, and you wanna make sure that your zipper head is all the way off to the left. Once you've got that tape down secured and you are happy with your placement, throw it in the machine and run color stop two. We will be back right after two. And there we are, we're all tacked down. Now I want you to grab your two pieces of two inch by one inch ribby ribbon and your two front pieces of vinyl or fabric if you're using fabric. Take your ribbons and fold them in half, like so. Doo -doo -doo. Then find a measuring device and mark the half inch mark. Boop, boop. And boop, boop. And then fold this one. And half inch, la la. Ta-da. Okay, there you go. Now grab your hoops and pick either the left or the right and pull up your tape. Grab one of your ribby ribbons and put it so that the fold is towards the center. Then line up your chalk marks or your stitch marks or whatever you did with your die line. Make sure that you are top, bottom, left and right centered across that die line and zipper tape like so, tape it back down. So easy, so simple. Sorry, I don't know that one. <laughs> Just so you know, I can help if you ever misplace your phone. Try asking me to call your phone. So apparently Alexa's trying to be helpful. 
So we're also going to grab this other piece of tape or a ribbon. Make sure that the fold is towards the center. Mark your top, uh, your half inch marks. Line them up with your stitch line. Center it across your uh, zipper. Tape it back down like so. Now grab your one inch by nine and a half inch vinyl. Buck it right up against your teeth. Make sure that you are left right centered. Go ahead and put a little piece of tape tape to hold it in place like so. And run it right along those teeth all the way down. Tape it there as well. Now grab your bottom vinyl. Buck it right up against those teeth. Make sure you are covering your die lines on the left, the right, and the bottom. And we're just gonna put a tiny little bit of tape right there. Choo -choo -choo. And a tiny bit of tape right there. And then we're gonna go ahead and run Color Stop 3. Color Stop 3 will tack down the entire bottom piece and most of the top piece, except for about one inch. That's for a zipper trick later. Don't sweat it, it's all cool. We'll catch it in a little bit. Go ahead and throw it in the machine and run Color Stop 3 back in a second. All right, and so we've got our tack down down. We're gonna throw it back in the machine and run Color Stop 4, which is going to give you a die line for our first piece of vinyl placement for our applique. Back in just a second, go run Color Stop 4. Okay, so here's where things get interesting. On this bag, um, I'm doing all vinyl. You can do it in all cloth. And if you're doing it in cloth, you don't have to do quite as much trim work. Um, here's a cloth, the all cloth version. Um, but I wanted to do one in all vinyl as well, just to show it off. But by the time you get down here, that's going to be three layers of vinyl applique. And an awful lot of machines are not happy about that. So what we're going to do is we are going to lessen the amount of bulk that your machine has to deal with by taking a ruler and lining it up with that white die line that we just that we just stitched and then below the line see here's the zipper here's the line so we're working below we are going to draw ourselves just a quick little line a a quarter of an inch low one quarter of an inch low, just like so. And we're gonna go, woo. Can you see that line? You should be able to see that line. All right, now we're gonna grab some scissors and we are going to cut right along that line. This is going to decrease the amount of bulk as we put not quite applique upon applique. And the good news is you can now save this piece of vinyl for something else. Do, do, do. Like so. Now we are going to grab our white vinyl <clears throat> and we are going to lay it so that it covers this die line a little bit. So the way I'm going to do it is I'm gonna line it up with that line. See the line? And then I'm gonna slide it just about a quarter of an inch over. Now I'm going to take some tape and I'm going to tape all four corners. And now I'm going to run color stop five to tack that down and then we'll trim in just a minute, back in just a second. All right, so we've got our zigzag there, yay. We're gonna trim off the top of this. And you notice it didn't go all the way off to the ends of the vinyl. If you're one of those people who wants to keep that straight line all the way across, then you can go ahead and do a mark and it's not going to hurt anything because that's gonna be off the bag. But I know some of you are very anal retentive about straight lines. So we're gonna take our applique scissors and we're cutting on the top of the zigzag. Remember the key to this is you want to make sure you've got nice sharp scissors super sharp applique scissors. You put the paddle on top of the zigzag. And my zigzag doesn't start for a little bit, so we're gonna, there. Now, pull just slightly, a little positive tension on your excess, and then just glide your scissors. It's about angle. 
Ah, there you go. Throw it in the machine and go ahead and run color stop six. I will see you after six. And we're back. So you see our dye line right there. And again, it doesn't go all the way to the end, but that's okay. We can fix that. And because we don't want bulk upon bulk upon bulk, we are going to go ahead and extend that line out. And again, if you're doing this in all fabric, it's not going to matter quite as much. But for vinyl, ew. So we're going to extend that out. Then we're going to grab our applique scissors and we're going to cut below. Cut below. Don't cut through the middle. Do -do -do. Remember, paddle on the zigzag. Get a good angle for yourself. Pull this way. Oh. Oh, wait a minute. No, no, no. We want to be a quarter of an inch low. Yeesh. Well, I'm going to guesstimate it. There's, that's a quarter of an inch. Sure it is. Why not? I was getting ahead of myself. <laughs> See what happens when you don't draw a line? That line should have been a quarter of an inch low. All right. We're just going to do this because <laughs> I am making a hot mess of everything. Look at me. Without a line, I'm a mess. And I lost my place in pattern. And la di da di da. All right. So a quarter of an inch below our line. See, when I have a line, I can actually do this fairly well. Do do do. There you go. Quarter of an inch. Quarter of an inch low. Now we're gonna take our last piece of blue, or our last piece of applique vinyl, the blue vinyl, and we're gonna line it up with that line, and then we're gonna slide it up about a quarter of an inch. And we're gonna make sure that the bottom die line of our bag, see that corner down there, is covered. Then we're gonna tape this in place. And I can tell you right now, I am probably going to trim this little bit right here. I don't like it, but I'm gonna get it laid in place first before I hack it with some scissors. Because I like everything to lay nice and flat. So let's go ahead and trim. that. And of course, all of my tape pulled up because I pulled. Throw it in the machine and run color stop to seven. And then we'll come back and trim the top of the blue. Okay, it's this one that you're going to trim right on the zigzag. Whee! Okay, and again, I did not, because your machine will not go all the way, you're going to have to draw some lines. So I'm going to extend this out this way and this way. Do, do, do. Grab my apple pay scissors, put the paddle on the zigzag like so. Again, a little positive tension with your left hand or if you're a lefty with your right hand, you just glide. Now I'm getting down here where I'm um, Free in it. There you go. All right. I'm going to make sure that the bottom of this is not curling up on me. And I am going to throw it in the machine and I am going to run all of color stops eight, nine, and 10. So you will not be back until we are between 10 and 11. Run all of eight, nine, and 10. See you between 10 and 11 just like that. All right, kid folk, here we are between steps 10 and 11. So we're gonna do two things. The first is gonna pull up some tape on the left side of your bag by your zipper. Yawn zipper. And then, save some of it. We're gonna open up the zipper. Come here, there you go. And we are going to grab a seam ripper and we are going to put a small tear, just like so. Flip this bad boy over and see the two line stitch lines, not the red ones, 
but the two ones in the middle, yeah, those. We are going to trim out the stabilizer between just those two lines, just the stabilizer. Don't cut your zipper, don't cut your vinyl, don't cut your fabric, just those, it's a quarter inch just behind the zipper so that we can, you know, get in the bag. Ta-da! And la T. Ta da! Now we're gonna flip it back over. We are going to close the zipper. I know, open, close, open, close. We're gonna put the ribbon back where it belongs, the vinyl back where it belongs. We're gonna grab a piece of tape, tape it down. There we go. Ooh, we're gonna trim that because it's ugly and I don't like it. Then we're gonna flip it over and we are going to grab our first piece of lining. This is the larger piece with the half inch um, fold ironed in. And we are going to place it so that we are showing just zipper. You wanna make sure that you are covering left and right die lines on the bag. Yes, I am, and the bottom, there you go. And we are gonna put four corner tape, camera tape, just to kind of hold it in place while we run color stop 11. Just like so. There you go. And I will see you after 11. So there we are and there we go. We've got that piece tacked down. Now grab your other piece of small back lining with the half inch fold and line it up on the top cut. Make sure that you are left, right, centered. Do, do, do. And go ahead and throw some tape there and there to hold it in place and run color stop 12. And we will be back after 12. And there we go. Now we are going to open our zipper all the way to our ribbon stop, but we also want to pull our zipper head so that it's this way, so it doesn't get stitched in. I've had a couple of people go, I did exactly what you said, and I stitched the zipper tongue to the bag. Oh no, flip it this way. Then put a little piece of tapey tape, because metal bits, ew, evil. Then we come back down here, and we line that up, blah, 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 yada, yada, yada. Tape back down, throw it in the machine, and run color stop 13. Yay. And we will see you after 13. Okie dokie pokey. pokey. So what that did is that closed off our little um, top vinyl there, attached to the back, but it also gave us some die lines. If you're doing a top attach, if you're doing the two lobster claws or D-rings at the top, you'll use these two. If you're doing a side attach like I am, you'll use this one. Take your three inches of five eighths inch gross grain ribbon, pass it through your lobster claw or D-ring, even up your raw edges, and overlap by about a quarter of an inch. You want to put one piece of tape here to hold the lobster claw in place or the D-ring, and one piece here to hold the um, raw edges. Throw it in the machine and run color stop 14. We will be back after 14. Woohoo! We are all tacked down and we are ready for um, the back. So grab your piece of, I think it's nine and a half by seven vinyl, and you want to line it up with the top edge. And if you want to, you can go ahead and do a four corner tack. Make sure that you are left, right centered, however, mm -hmm. just like that. There we go. There we go. There we go. And there we go. Throw yawn bits in the machine and run color stop 15. Almost done, guys.
color shop 15. Woo-hoo, our back is attached. Now flip it over, woo, and grab your last piece of lining. And you wanna make sure that you are covering your entire die line, left, right, top, bottom, center, blah, blah, blah. And because I am using Diana today, and she's a grabby little girl, you do not have to use this much tape, but I know my machine, if I do not use this much tape, she will grab and suck that lining backwards and over, and I will have all kinds of problems and be very sad and upset. So, attach the last piece of lining to the back, throw it in the machine, and run color stop 16, do not run 17. 17 is a dead stop to keep your needle head from moving to the center of your work and catching on your zipper or your lobster claws and D-rings. Go ahead and put it in the machine and run 16, don't run 17. We will come back and meet here for our finish work. Yay! Oh my God, so excited to be almost done! Looky there. And we've got everything attached. So we are going to go ahead and skip a whole bunch of <coughs> foo for all and build up and just pop that out of the hoop. Now, everything's got a nice straight edge on it. So I am going to use my handy dandy ruler and roto cutter to make short work of trimming this bad boy up. You want to leave somewhere between one eighth and one quarter of an inch. Um between your stitch line and your excess vinyl. You also wanna be careful not to cut over that way and cut any of your uh, stitch work because that would suck a lot. Doo -doo. And now I'm gonna do the same thing on uh, this side. And now I am going to Make sure that I cut all the way through. There we go. Flip it over. On the top of your bag, you have a hole. We are going to need a turning tab so we can stitch our lining closed when we're done turning everything. So take your scissors and you wanna cut right there, um, almost, but not quite, almost, but not quite, to the stitch line, right even with the stitch line. Then you wanna fold your turning tab out of the way. I've cut my turning tab before. It's painful. I cried. And you want to tape it out of your way because now we are going to cut here. And you do not want to cut your turning tab. Trust me, you don't want to cut that. There we go. And now let's trim the bottom of the bag. Again, somewhere between one eighth and one quarter. It's what you're comfortable with. Depends on how close you like to cut. You just don't want to cut your stitches. That would be bad. Now, for the next part, we can't use our ruler and our roto cutter because we have to roundy roundy our corners. So grab some scissors and you want to come in and roundy roundy your corners. That makes your corners nice and um, um, pointy looking rather than all wadded up with extra fabric and or vinyl. Da da da. La -da -da. La -da -da. And something I've started doing recently in the last couple of bags, usually I'm like, we do a double turn and then we stitch closed. No, we are only going to do a single turn. We're going to turn the whole bag out through um, our turning tab so that all of the lining, the entire lining is now on the outside of the bag. And that way we can stitch closed without having to fight the top lip. So get it as turned out as you possibly can. Careful, don't tug or force. Work gently so as you don't so you don't rip your lining. Now, we're gonna tuck both of our tabs inside the hole, like so. And we are going to line up the lining. So that, well, 
we look something like this. Then we are going to take some pins because pins are your friends. Let's see if we can't get that a little better looking. Not that anybody's ever going to see it because it's the very top of the bag and they'd have to turn it inside out to see. But as long as we're doing it right, let's go ahead and do it all the way right. Go ahead and pin your two pieces of lining closed. Come here. And then you're going to want some needle and thread. I would highly recommend using thread that matches your lining so that you can't see, but I am going to use white so that you can see what I'm doing um, because it's more important for you to see what I'm doing than it is for me to have invisible stitching at the very top of my bag on the inside where nobody can see it. Now, where did I put my needle and thread? Now, you can do a ladder stitch, you can do a whip stitch, you can whip it, whip it good. I am going to do a real quick whip stitch because nobody is paying me to watch me hand sew for 10 minutes. That's just not entertaining TV. Do, 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 do. Um, there we go, oops. You want to close it all the way. There we go. You want to close it all the way off. And I like to use, because it's cheating, ha, 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 the uh, stitch seam. Wow, this, this thread's ugly. I don't like this thread. I don't know how old this thread is. But it's really gross and grabby and catchy. Um... To, I like to stitch it to my stitching because that makes it fast and easy for me if my thread was not all balled up and gross. And yes, you are right, a ladder stitch or um, a hidden stitch would be way better. But again, it's all the way up at the top of the lining on the inside of the bag and nobody's ever going to see it. Well, now I'm just getting sloppy. It looks like Frankenstein's monster's stitches here. Frankenbag! One of these days, I'm going to make a Frankenbag. I have a loose idea of what Frankenbag's going to look like. I don't have a solid idea. Um, but you know what? Loose ideas are usually the most fun. Because then you come out with something and go, Woo! But, <laughs> well, that's not what I had in mind, but dude, cool. To do. Or, you know, the other thing. It comes out and you're like, ew. Never mind. Hide that in the back of the closet. Nobody wants to see that. Do, do, do. Almost done. This is kind of reminding me of, I think her name was Jenny. The uh, little cowgirl from Toy Story. Was her name Jenny? I can't remember. But her hat was this color red with the the wide white stitches on it. I'll have to go look that up. Now it's bugging me. Hey, Alexa. What was the name of the little cowgirl in Toy Story? According to an Alexa Answers contributor, the cowgirl's name from Toy Story is Jessie. Jessie, not Jenny. Wow. I messed that up, didn't I? And now we're going to tie this bad boy off. And I know that whoever's watching this video, like 10 of you went, it's not Jenny, it's Jesse. But you weren't here. So what good did you do me? All right, we're going to trim that off. Give me our trim trim. And now we're going to turn the whole bag right side out. La -da 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 -da. Boom, boom. I'm gonna have to put 
pokey that corner. And I'm probably going to have to pokey that corner too. Okay, let me find something to pokey corners. Pokey corner. Pokey corner. Pokey corner. Pokey corner. Zip. Roll your seams. Now those, this is, the cloth bag is going to be a lot better behaved. Um, the vinyl bag, the vinyl has to be trained. And you can either roll your seams and then stack heck a lot of book, um, chunk and book on it and let it squish. Um, but I've also discovered that, ooh, there's a little hair there. You could also use clover clips and some felt. So let's take a look at her bag. Woohoo! Isn't it beautiful? Yeah, baby. Yeah, sweetheart, you are gorgeous. Um, I am going to put some felt strips and clover clips to train my vinyl to lay flat. Uh, okay, guys, that's it. We're done. Um, once it's all flattened out, I will attach whatever the dangle is for this because I don't quite know yet. And then we'll be done. Peace.